Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Blessed and Bossed Up podcast and another installment of our She is Uncompromising series. I'm very excited about today's interview. And I say that every interview, but whatever, I'm always excited (laughs) about these interviews. And in this series, I am interviewing people that I've been able to glean from and really admire the uncompromising spirit that they have. So today we have Michelle Tillman on here, a.k.a. Fertility Freak. (laughs) And I don't know if you remember this. So I started following you on YouTube because you would do the Married at First Sight recaps. And that's my show. Yes. (laughs) And so that's when I first found out about you. So then I started following you from there. And then you got pregnant with your daughter and you were sharing your journey. And I was like, oh, man, like because I was going through the same thing, but of course, not being vocal about it. Right. So I was silently watching and admiring your journey and your faith and what God was able to do in your life and in using that to really encourage my faith and what I was looking for him to do in mine. So then from there, what happened? You sent me an email like, man, it was like 2019. You sent me an email and usually I'm very like reserved and Mm -hmm. so usually I don't receive things like that. Well, I'll be like, "Mm, overstepping back up. (laughs) But you sent me an email and, and I just discerned the spirit of it being genuine. Um, and I took it as encouragement where you were just like, I don't know what you're believing in God for as it relates to having a baby, um, but God is going to bless you. And it was just a nice message. And I really received it well. And at the time I was actually pregnant and didn't tell anybody. And so I responded and was just like, thank you. I'm actually pregnant now. God is so good. And I was just so excited. So, of course, since then, continue to follow you and seeing what you're doing um, with your Fertility Freak brand and really just helping women to believe God for the miracle of having these babies. And so let's talk a little bit about your brand and the background that led you to this space. Yeah. So essentially, to be totally transparent, when I was trying to have my second child, I'm like, okay, the first time. Okay, God did a miracle, but okay, can can he do it again? You know, mm-hmm. uh, so um, I started making videos on TikTok to help me pass the time because I love to dance. And I know like some people are like, oh, I hate pointing and dancing, but I love to dance. Like mm-hmm. I've always been that way. And so I was just passing time on my journey as I was trying to get pregnant again. And so um, then I just started doing so much research on all the things that could possibly be prohibiting me from getting pregnant. And so I'm like, I'm already, I'm over 35. I'm overweight. We're dealing with male factor infertility. I have undiagnosed endometriosis. So, I mean, and IVF just, to me, it just wasn't an option. Like I just couldn't put wrap my mind around paying 50 K plus to have a baby when I've done it before. I just believe God wasn't going to, that wasn't going to be our story. And so as I was learning more information, I just began sharing the information in my TikTok videos like, okay, well, if you can't get pregnant, you should try this. You should try that. And so as I'm learning and sharing things I'm learning as I'm going, Mm -hmm. it's like God just showed me like this is what you were actually designed to be here for. This is what you're supposed to do. So I learned a new piece of information. And um, as soon as I learned and implemented the information, I was pregnant within the next two months. And so I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this the hack? Like, is this the hack that nobody told me about? So I was so excited to see like, okay, is this just me or not? So I started like, okay, I'm about to, I'm, I'm going to start a business. You know, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Like, so this is at, at this point, I'm like, this is just going to be another thing. But then I realized this is what God really put me here for this moment in time. And there was women who were going to be drawn to me and my story. And this is what, this is, this is what all this was for. Like, why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to feel like less than a woman? Why can I give give my husband a child? Like, why do I feel be depressed and everyone around me is popping up pregnant? I'm feeling some type of way. And I'm why did all this happen? It's for this moment, because God knew that one, I'd be vulnerable in sharing, even while I was actually trying myself, which usually I would never do that. I'm mm-hmm. the type of person after the testimony has, has happened, then I'll tell you. And I would right. never be open, but something a God told me, start now. Cause it's going to be proof. Um, that's how the brand started. And so I started working with people and then I'm like, Oh, so this, this is not like a coincidence. This actually works. Like people are actually getting pregnant from working with me. And so um, that's how the brand got started. 
just me being vulnerable, sharing, and then bringing on people who I'm, I'm working with them for free and saying, hey, let's just try to see if you get pregnant. And then mm -hmm. people were getting pregnant and then it just went up from there. I love that because usually the things that we go through are the things that God is going to use for us to bless other people. But when we're going through that, we ain't trying to hear that. <laughs> like, <laughs> not God, at all. I hear you like, oh, you're going to be able to bless people, you know, who want to have kids. Cool, cool, cool. But what about me though? I'm going right. through this <laughs> right now. So let's go back to that journey of uh, your fertility journey. So you mentioned a few things just now, but how did you get to the point where you realized like, oh, this is going to be something that I'm going to have to believe God for? Um, because in the church, um, I was a part of my pastor. There was a moment he was praying for couples who were getting pregnant and that doesn't actually happen a lot. Pastors don't necessarily address that a lot in fertility. Mm -hmm. Um, we we'll always say she pregnant, sit down and you shouldn't, but it's not necessarily the other side, the people who are trying to do the right way, trying to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. So my pastor at that time was praying over people, couples to get pregnant. And so he was like, God told me it's something about her. Like, and I have video footage of all this when it happened in 2018. It's something about her. When, when you pray for her, it's going to be released in your life. And so everybody's screaming at the church. We're running around shouting. And somebody tried to prophesy in my ear like, and you're going to be pregnant next month. And it's going to be a boy. So I'm like, oh, my God, I'm about to have a boy. I'm about to be pregnant next month. And nothing happens. Crickets. Mm -hmm. So I, at that point, I said, no, I have to talk to God straight up. Me to him. I don't want anybody. Else. I don't need anybody else's two cents in the middle. I need to seek God for myself because I don't want any person who is a prophet to be able to have that much control over my mind and my thoughts yeah. of what I thought God was about to do in my life. So at that point, I decided, you know, my husband, he said, I don't think we're going to do IVF. I don't think that's what God has for us. Because for me, I was like, let's let's figure out the financing. Let's go. I just want to have a baby. He was like, mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to be our story. So um, even though I was devastated, I was depressed that next month when I'm like, but the prophet said, but the, I, I just was so like lost. And so I knew at that point, my relationship with God has to go deeper because I don't ever want to be that dependent. So that's how I knew I had to seek God for myself mm -hmm. and hear him clearly for myself um, to know what my journey was going to be like to parenthood. Man, that's so good because it's so dangerous when you only hear from God through a third party. And Jesus literally died on the cross for our sins, ascended back to heaven and sent us the Holy Spirit to be our helper. We don't have to do what they did in the Old Testament. We don't have to go to the priest. We don't have to go to the temple. We have one-on-one -on -one personal access to God. And so many of us, we disregard the, the tools that we have to speak to him. We ignore the Holy Spirit. We don't open our word. We don't learn how to hear from God for ourselves. And so we rely on these third parties. And that is so dangerous because like you said, people be prophesying all the time. And we have to test the spirit by the spirit. And you can't do that if you don't know the spirit, right? Hello. So, <laughs> I love that you touched on that because it's it, we're especially susceptible to being manipulated when we're in these vulnerable states, especially something as delicate as wanting to have a child. And I will always be so quiet about it because I'm like, everybody can't be involved in this story. Like this is a, a God thing. And I, I'm, I'm so glad that you touched on that. So were you diagnosed with infertility or something that caused this uh, struggle to be able to conceive? Yeah. So me and my husband, we um, were trying for six months. And so because of our age, you know, the doctor's like, you can come in after six months. So we go to the doctor and, you know, I, I don't have any reproductive issues that didn't require further surgeries for them to see. They're like, okay, you, you know, you, everything looks like it's working. You having a regular period every month. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, when he did his testing, they said, you know, Oh man, we, we don't even see anything on the result. Like does, mm. does he even have sperm at all? So I'm like, they're like, Oh, that can't be right. Let's, let's bring them back in. We'll, we'll do it again. So they come back in and then the test result is like even worse. So basically we go to the fertility clinic and they're like, there's no way that you're going to get pregnant with, you know, his semen. And so then I go to my doctor at the time who actually had happened to be Holy Spirit filled. I miss her so much. And um, she was like, 
you know, sometimes just losing about 15 pounds can make a difference. And I, and, you know, people are told that all the time. And she was like, but you know what? Don't worry about it. Holy spirit says you're going to get pregnant. And I'm like, you know, I've heard this before. Thank you. <laughs> That's cute. So I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. Um, and then also from my periods for my whole life have always been extremely heavy, painful, really bad cramps. I'm talking about in college, I had cramps so bad that I blacked out, humbled over on the ground and missed my final exam, failed a course, lost my scholarship because my Whoa. pain and my cramps were so bad. I was like, I couldn't do anything. And so mm -hmm. I know. And so the doctor basically at that point, I was 18 when that happened. And so the doctor was like, the only way we're going to be for sure to know if you have endometriosis is to go in and do like, uh, like a kind of like a procedure. And so at that point, I'm 18. I'm not thinking about that. So all this, all these years looking back and looking at, you know, what the definition of endometriosis is, I believe I have undiagnosed endometriosis based on the pain level and everything that it has. So on top of, you know, his male factor infertility, me having undiagnosed endometriosis, because I wasn't willing to do a procedure to find out, um, because mm -hmm. what was that going to really do for me? And so, um, and just those are the things that we had to battle with. And, you know, being overweight and then my age on top of that was the two was the things that we had to deal with. And so when that doctor told us there was no way we we're going to get pregnant with his sperm, that's when I was just like, I just felt so devastated. Yeah, let's sit there for a second. How do you pull yourself up from that? Because. You mentioned it before. It's like, you know, I'm not going to be able to give my husband a child. Like, this is something that has gone through my head with my story. Like, I know that my husband's Nigerian. So at the wedding, they like his grandmother told me at our wedding, you we got our wedding was in January. She said, You have until October to have a baby. I looked at this lady and was like, Okay. Okay. Wow. And at the time, I didn't know that I would have issues. Uh, I had had a miscarriage before, but I was like, oh, I was in college. I had resolved in my mind. I wasn't ready anyway. It's fine. I'll be all right. I'm, I don't have, I, I didn't think I had, I was going to continue to have the issue. Right. And so she was like, you have until October. And I was like, okay. And I was cool. I didn't mind the comment at first because we wanted to have kids relatively quickly. And so I was ready to go. We were both ready to go <laughs> after the wedding. And it was, we just kept having losses. And I remember just thinking about his family and how um, just having children is such a big deal and how devastating it would be for me to look his family in the face and how I would feel like less of a woman. Even this year, his grandmother was visiting from Nigeria and um, I didn't tell her I was pregnant. But my prayer, because we knew she was coming, I said, God, Please let me be pregnant by the time she gets here. <laughs> that is <laughs> because hilarious. I am afraid to have to, you know, emotionally, I don't know if I could take having this conversation because I know mm -hmm. people have. And um, it was funny because when they were on their layover getting ready to come to the States, his dad called and so she said, hey, when I get there, we need to have a talk. And I knew exactly what she was talking about. I was like, okay. And so uh, when they got here, I, we went to go see her and she was like, and so I told her I was pregnant. She's like, oh, praise the Lord. She started walking, <laughs> running back and forth. Oh. And it, was like, it was so beautiful to see, but I was like, God, you came through. Because if I had this news for her, I would be sitting here devastated right now. Um, but, you know, just those feelings of feeling, oh, I can't give my husband a, a child or feeling like less of a woman, all of these things, it can be all consuming. Yeah. So how did you navigate those emotions? I went to therapy um, and I actually advocate for people to go to therapy. Even a part of my program, I let them know, hey, I can talk to you, but I am not a licensed professional counselor. Mm -hmm. I went to a therapist who actually um, specializes with people dealing with infertility because when I say I was like depressed and, and the same thing happened to me with a grandma. So I think there's something about grandmas like they don't care. So I remember walking in Thanksgiving to my husband's grandma's house and she looked at me and she said, you ain't pregnant yet. Mm. And I was just like, like she had no idea what yeah. I was literally like dealing with at that point. You know, they think it's just a lighthearted thing. And it was so like, I was like, I ain't never going back to her house again. Like, but of course I've been back. But at that right. point, I, it was so, it was so like, I wanted to ball up in the corner and cry because it was in front of everybody and everybody turned around and looked at me and I'm just like, 
just waiting on God. Like that's what I would say. And so also just, you know, seeing a therapist and having her to, um, and she had actually dealt with infertility herself too. So she was able to like walk me through like, okay, how do you feel when this happens? Like, how do you feel when you see this and what can you do to navigate it? Because if I see people around me, you know, getting pregnant everywhere, um, I just began to pray to God to um, give me insight. So I'm not taken off, taken off guard because I remember one time I was at church and someone passed me a, like a little envelope and I'm thinking like, oh, okay, what is this? And it was, uh, I'm going to be a big sister. And it was like, I opened it in front of a whole bunch of people. And at that point, like my heart sunk. So there were times when like I've been given news that someone was pregnant and um, it just it just broke me. And then I remember another time a coworker of mine, I had a dream that she was going to announce that she was pregnant. So God braced me because he like I thanked God so much for that dream, because if that would have happened for real and I didn't have a heads up that could have broke me in the middle of my work day and then I would have been a hot mess. So like God literally showed me and I told her that and she said. I, I am pregnant. I was like, you know, I was able to handle it better. And mm -hmm. so over the, over the years, it's just having a coping mechanism of skills to like, okay, this bothers me because I believe God is going to bless me with children, but I don't know when. So it's like having the faith to know it is, but that when part, that's the hard part. When, mm -hmm. when is it going to come? And so that's the part we don't know. Um, and so that's how I've navigated, but I've asked God and I know people are like, oh, you crazy. You can't, you can't tell God to tell you a date and all that stuff. But God told me both times, both times he gave me a timeline and people are like, well, can you pray for me to get a timeline? Cause uh, I remember I had a dream and my dreams seemed to be prophetic. A lot of the times I had a dream that I was telling my coworkers, it's been almost two years that we're trying and we're finally pregnant and everybody's running around the church in my dream. Right. And then that's literally what happened right almost at the two year mark is when I got pregnant. And wow. then I was in a prayer church service and I asked God, like, when am I going to have my baby? And this was, uh, I believe, January of 2021. And he said, uh, no, January of 2022. And he said, by December, you'll be holding your baby in your arms. And then my son was born in December of last year. So God has been faithful to me in that aspect of where he's giving yeah. me a heads up, which a lot of people don't get that. I don't know if he just know that I'm just anxious and I need some help. And he was just trying to help me out. Like, okay, girl, you're going to have the baby by <laughs> December. Uh, but um, th that's how I navigated just seeking God more and being more in tune with him. So I can hear him more clearly getting in therapy. And um, I wish that I, what I really wanted was to be around faith-based women, um, even women of color who could, um, support me in a way that I felt like didn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, I didn't see, I didn't feel any area or any place where I could do that. Um, and that's, that's another big reason why I started what I'm doing now is because I felt like that was missing. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to create a space um, where that could happen. I think when we're believing in God, especially to have children, we can get so mad at God that we don't recognize his grace and his love and his gentleness even during those seasons. So I remember before having my first son, I was like, I don't know what I was doing. I, I remember, and I'm so mad I can't find the video, but I was in the car and I think I was vlogging or something. And I was like, it's August, 2019. I think that I'm going to get, I just feel in my spirit that I'm going to be pregnant this month. And so this was after like back-to-back -back losses. And I was like, but in this wow. one, it's going to go all the way. And I'm just talking and prophesying to myself. And I'm mad that I didn't don't know where the video is because that would have been a fire um, <laughs> post or something. But And I ended up finding out I was pregnant um, in early September. So I conceived in August. I was correct. And then, you know, that produced my, my son. And I'm like, man, God, and in hearing your story, God will really give us those winks, those, that grace, that love that yeah. I'm going to, to do this for you. But it's so hard to see it when you're in the middle of all the emotions. And I remember this last time trying to get pregnant. One time I got so mad. Like I had this, um, my husband had took my son out and I was in the middle of having another loss and I was so mad. I had this glass in my room and I launched it, bust the glass on the side <laughs> in the room, glass everywhere. Oh, but no. I was so mad. 
And I'm like, God, and I'm just like, you know, laying it all out there. And I remember after just getting all my emotions out, said, you know what? Nevertheless, your will, not my own. I am very angry, but this cannot be all consuming to where I'm not hearing you. So I'm getting up. And that's literally what happened. I got up, pulled myself together and, and moved on. And I was in therapy at the time as well. So I was able to uh, process that. But we have to fight through our emotions and not allow them to cause a rift between us and God. Because I feel like that's where I was at for yeah. a little bit. And I had to fight to close that gap that my emotions were trying to uh, open up. Have you been in that space where you're, you feel like you were getting distant from God because of the emotions of it? Yeah. Um, especially after I got that, that prophecy and I realized that I worked in ministry, but it, at that time I worked in ministry, but I wasn't seeking God on the level I should. Cause you just get so used to like being in church all the time because mm -hmm. you're working there. But my relationship with God myself had like became a little distant. And so when I realized that I had put so much power in the hands of someone else, that's when I really realized, okay, first of all, these test results are making me feel like I have no hope. And then, then I'm having somebody tell me something and it's not true and it doesn't happen. And so then I'm just, kind of like mad at church in general and God, like, God, why would you allow her to say that? Like I went and told people the prophet said, which that's probably a whole nother issue, but I was like, the prophet said, I'm going to be pregnant next month. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, girl, I'm be pregnant next month. I'm telling people like, okay. <laughs> so um, at that point I'm like, okay, God, I can't take this. Like I, I can't take this. I mean, I'm, there was plenty of nights where I cry, like boo-hoo, cry, like just like, why is this my story? I don't want to do that. I don't want to go through this. Like I, I did everything the right way. Like, why am I going through this? Like, mm -hmm. I, I just never, it, it was so hard. It was very hard. And, um, and I had to like pull away. Like sometimes I wouldn't go to people's baby showers. Like I had to make decisions that were healthy for me. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes like I couldn't, no, I can't help plan your baby shower. I'm not there right now. Like I just can't. And so it was there. There was definitely times where I felt like, God, like, what are you doing? Like, mm -hmm. where are you at? Do you hear me? Like, I'm I serve in ministry. I've been working in ministry for all these years. Like, why am I the one who's dealing with this? This should be somebody mm -hmm. else. And so mm -hmm. definitely felt very angry, felt very disappointed, felt abandoned. And so but. I'm so happy that whatever God did to my heart at, th at those moments, just it's like there was a shift that happened, like. No, I don't ever want to be in a place where I can't hear what God is saying about me in my life. So it made me want to go deeper again to a place that I know I had been before, but I kind of have fell back. Mm -hmm. um, just being in a routine of going to a church building and thinking that was something when my real relationship with God had nothing to do with the church building. So I had to get to that point once once I was upset and angry. I did get to mm -hmm. that point where uh, I wanted to hear what God had to say for myself and from no one else. Yeah, girl, listen, you're knocking on my door. <laughs> so when you got to the point where you had your daughter, so I know a lot of the strategy came before you had your son, and that's what the business is built off of. So what what did you guys do anything differently um, in order to conceive your daughter? Or that was just God being God. I had actually had, okay, so the biggest thing that I, looking back during that time, I felt like, it was God being God. And it was to a certain degree. But one of the things that I always tell people that um, they diminish the power of is forgiveness, forgiving people mm -hmm. and having. Um, so that was the biggest thing that I did different with my daughter. The biggest thing I did different with her was I was essentially I didn't consider it gossiping. But it was something huge going on at my job. And, and we was talking about it every day. Like, oh, my God, I can't believe she did that. I can't believe he did that. We in the church, they post peace. And we're talking about it. And then one time I was just in the quietness of, you know, spending time with God. And he said, don't you say another word about her or that situation. It was like I thought someone was in the room with me. It was so <laughs> loud. I was like, whoa. I was like, am I dreaming? Is this a vision? What's going on? And so people would be calling me like, hey, did you get an update? What happened? And I'd be like. Uh, I can't talk about that anymore. That's mm -hmm. the only thing that is that happened literally one month before I got pregnant. Wow. 
And so that that's what with my daughter. With my son, oh, there was tons of things. One, I was taking my basal body temperature instead of going by the ovulation strips and going by the app. The biggest thing that I learned is that I was having sex at the wrong time every single month <laughs> and had no idea that, wait, you don't ovulate when this app is telling you you ovulate. And so there's different factors that can um, interfere with, you know, you take an ovulation strip. Sometimes when you're plus size, the uh, hormone doesn't show up until it's too late. So you think you're doing everything, you following the strips, and that may not be the issue. Some people, it, it is correct. Some people, it's not. So the biggest change was taking my basal body temperature and then realizing what I put in my body as far as my food and nutrients had a lot to do with why I wasn't getting pregnant. Like, thinking about there's so many women, especially women of color who are deficient in vitamin D and iron. And mm -hmm. so a lot of times we don't realize that when your body is deficient in those things and your body knows a baby is going to require more of that. It's like, no, nah, no, nah, we're not going to let her get pregnant right now. She doesn't have enough iron or vitamin D to sustain her and a baby. So those are mm -hmm. some small things that I changed, taking my basal body temperature, stop drinking coffee, not realizing that it was causing, you know, um, insulin spikes and my cortisol to uh, go up and unbounce on my hormones. So there's so many small holistic things that I was doing day to day that I had no idea were interfering with my ability to get pregnant. And so I just began like writing down every single thing that I was doing, like, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And then so two months after I started making all those changes, then I was pregnant again. And it happened to be the very last month that would allow for me to be pregnant and have him by December, which the guy had told me. So I was like, God, okay, you said December. Well, how's this going to happen? And we don't want the baby to come early. So how's this going to happen? I got to be pregnant by. And so it literally lined up with everything that God told me when I started making the changes. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of things that I did like holistically to make the changes. And I had no idea that those small changes have such a big influence on my ability to get pregnant and stay pregnant. So yeah. And all of those things are important, even without pregnancy. Right, right. Because you're taking care of your body, paying attention to what you put in it. And it's God is just so brilliant in how he will show us how to get what, he, what we want, but also just make us better in so many other ways at the same time. Right. So when you started, you talked earlier about sharing your journey while you were still believing in God for it. How was that? Because I know a lot of people are hesitant to do that. And even me, God had me share um, uh, my journey as well prior to the promise. And I was like, what? <laughs> no, because just like you, I'm like, I'll tell you the testimony. We don't need to talk in the middle of it. Like, <laughs> that's not your business. Right. But he will do that. So how did you feel kind of really putting yourself out there, especially somewhere like TikTok where everything goes viral like that? Right. How, did that how did you overcome like those emotions to be obedient with that? I, I really felt like, God, your word says, <laughs> like your word says that I should be fruitful and multiply. Your word says that, you know, you will give me the desires of my heart, not because but because you put this desire in me, it's going to happen. You told me that I'd be holding a baby in my arms by December. So prove it. Like, <laughs> show mm -hmm. me what you're working with, God. Like, I'm here. I'm surrendering. Like, this is so embarrassing. People are commenting and stuff. Like, and I'm looking at, I'm trying, I had to stop looking at the comments. Because yeah. I was like, oh, everybody think they know. Oh, all you got to do is take this. All I got to do is take that. I'm like, that's not my issue. And that's mm -hmm. one of the biggest things that, you know, with TikTok and, you know, going viral, like a lot of my videos have went viral, but a lot of the people um, are commenting stuff that's just not true. Like, oh, if you just take, uh, what is it, Geritol, they say, or Mucinex. Okay, that's only if you have, you know, a cervical mucus issue. That's not my issue. So like, there's mm -hmm. just so many different misinformation everywhere. So uh, I felt like God was like, if you put yourself out there, I'm going to do it. And so it was, I had to stop looking at the comments. That was the main thing. And just literally asking God, okay, what should this video be about? Like, how should I do this? Like I, people are like, well, how'd you get your videos to go viral? I'm like, listen, I was just asking God what I should do. Like <laughs> mm -hmm. it ain't no perfect strategy. Cause every time I try to come up, Oh, they like this and they do that. And I just try to do it. And then it's like two views. But <laughs> when I just like ask God, like, okay, well, what is, what is the thing? Like, what, what should I be saying? literally asking God how I should put things out um, and not looking at comments and just trusting that if they see me clearly not pregnant 
and then I'm saying I'm doing these things and I get pregnant. That is literally the formula to say, here's a success story. Like you actually mm -hmm. saw this. It's all documented. Cause I thought about, well, I could just save the videos and then I'll upload them on YouTube after. And when mm -hmm. it happens and then I could release them all at the same time. Like that's what I was thinking. That'd be a better strategy instead of actually doing it in real time. I've never done anything like this. This is embarrassing. Like they're like, Oh, it's okay, girl. God, go bless you in your time. Like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and so it was embarrassing, just to be quite honest. It was embarrassing. And I stopped looking at comments. And that's the only way I got through it. I just said, God, you got to do it. Like, mm -hmm. I'm really embarrassed. Like, As a consumer, yeah. what I loved about your videos was I feel like they exemplified the scripture that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Because in all of the videos, you're dancing, you're excited, and you're talking, you know, sharing your journey. And because we know the reality of that journey is not dancing, it's <laughs> not being excited. Not at all. None of that. And so I love them because they they show that aspect of it. Like I could still be excited about waiting for what God is going to do. Like, yeah, it, another month has passed. I'm feeling down because my, my cycle came. So that's going to lead to a whole three to five days of having an attitude because it hasn't happened. Hello, yes. But let me just, you know, looking at your videos, I'm like, you know what? You can be happy and joyful during that time. And so that's what I got from it as, as a consumer. And I'm grateful that, that you did it. Yeah, uh, a lot of times... It was literally, I made the videos when my period came and I'm like, all right, I got to dance this out. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. Like you said, like the attitude, the feeling down for about three to five days. And then I'm like, okay, I can't stay there. Mm -hmm. It's another month. It's another try. And mm -hmm. so um, it took a long time for me to get there. Like at some, I used to be like, okay, I'm out for a good two, three weeks. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I finally got to the point where, okay my period is coming. And, and the reason, one of the biggest reasons why I was able to do that is because I started taking my basal body temperature. It kind of gave me a heads up to know my period was coming. So I'm like, okay, okay my temperature just dropped. I know my period is about to come. Let me get my mind right. That was a huge game changer for me to know that it was coming versus is it coming? Is it not? Um, that was a huge game changer. And so, yeah, smiling through it was, um, People are always like, how are you so happy? Like you're, you're going through something bad. How are you happy? And I'm like, child, I ain't happy. But the joy yeah. of the Lord, <laughs> the mm -hmm. joy, I just gonna have, I'm just gonna smile anyway because being sad doesn't help anything. It doesn't help. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm gonna have my moment, but I'm not gonna stay there. So, mm -hmm. and, and making light of it almost because some people just didn't understand my struggle. So, so people would inbox me and be like, I've never seen anybody like, it's sad, something sad. And then I'm still laughing at the end of the video. Like, I've never seen that before. And so I was just like, okay, well, God, whatever you're doing, let's go. Yeah. So how did the business part come about? So what were, because a lot of people, especially who listen to the show, they have testimonies and God has brought them through things. And that's the foundation of the business that they build. So what were the beginning stages of turning this wonderful testimony into an actual business? So let me just be transparent. I, I work for work with so many different coaches and they did not. And I never really found someone who really I felt like understood. And so they had me doing stuff that just didn't feel good to me. Like, I'm not going to DM 100 people and say, do you need a fertility coach? Like, I just I was like, that's not me. Like, I can't. Yeah. That is not going to that's not going to work for me. So I did go through probably about three, four coaches until I found a coach who I felt like understood me. And she had to be a believer, a woman of color who understood like, OK, you have to dig deep you need to be who you needed on your journey. Yeah. And so um, she kind of just helped me to develop and understand like um, you didn't go through your pain just for nothing. Like God literally had you be embarrassed and looking crazy and, you know, in your own eyes for a reason. Um, and so changing it to a business, it felt at first I didn't like it. Cause like, I don't want to charge anybody anything, but mm -hmm. she was like, how much time did you put into this course? How much time did you put into how many years did you spend getting this information? How many nights did you cry while you were trying to figure it out? Like mm -hmm. how many times were you alone and there was no one for you to talk to because all your friends couldn't understand what it's like to be trying to have a baby because they're trying not to have a baby. Like how, mm -hmm. how long did you do this? How long did you endure these things? You have been through some things, you've taken courses, you put your knowledge together. So why can you not put this in a way where you can afford to spend the time to walk somebody through their journey? Yeah. So try to change it into a business, um, 
kind of more so um, wasn't something that I initially saw at all. Like I didn't I didn't expect that to be what my journey was. But then people were like, well, I'll pay you if you could tell me this, if you could tell me that. Like and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. OK, God, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. So basically, it just took time for me to package what I've learned and put it together like in a course or in a book. And, and so that is what um, kind of just shifted things probably about as soon as I announced that I was pregnant, um, that's when things just started blowing up for me. And people were just like, Oh my God, whatever you're doing, I want to do it. Tell me, where do I sign mm -hmm. up? Like, and so just getting more structure with it. And I'm still working on that. I still am working on the structure that I need to, for things to function and flow. But um, I've been able to help, you know, um, nine women get pregnant so so far so I'm just that's like great. that's wonderful uh let's go God let's do it like and I and there's something about when people like really invest in what they say they believe in God for like you said you want this let's do it show mm -hmm. me that you're serious mm -hmm. and so things just shifted um right after I announced my second pregnancy things just kind of shifted and it just took off from there even one of the things I feel like is so underrated in business is building a community before you have something to sell, because it just gives you the opportunity to round up your target audience, give mm -hmm. them value. So when you announce, now I have something for you to invest in, is that right. much easier. And so I believe that's what God had you doing, sharing your journey, building your community so that when you have this, now you have this pregnancy announcement and you can also announce the business, it's a no brainer. You're not struggling to get clients. Right. Because people were able to be taken on that journey. Yeah, my coach at the time, she was like, how do you have 600 people signing up for a webinar every week? And I'm like, mm -hmm. I, she's like, are you advertising? I'm like, my TikTok videos. Mm -hmm. So it's just so crazy. If I had been too scared to post those videos, I would have never had all those people who are ready and willing mm -hmm. to um, invest and learn about things that they just don't know and things the piece to the puzzle of their story that they're missing, mm -hmm. um, they wouldn't have been there to do that. And so I'm so happy that I was obedient at that time because it, it's paying off. Yeah. And one thing I've noticed in like the trying to conceive community and all of that is it's so fear-based. <laughs> like everything is so fear-based and anxiety-based, even with Pregnancy and, and childbirth, everything is marketed to cater towards people's anxieties and their fears. And so I, and even, you know, trying to conceive some people will get just so desperate to have a child that you might go and eat, drink something or whatever that's not for you. And so I love what you're doing because you're presenting people with a holistic approach. You're presenting people with the truth of the Lord. I was laughing at one of your videos, um, which is it was somebody, uh, you said that their jobs that they would want to pay for IVF. Oh, Starbucks. <laughs> yes, and you helped them get, I was cracking up because the way I would have been at corporate life. <laughs> Girl, oh, Starbucks, they were so mad at me. The lady, was. she was so mad at me for coming in there. I was like, I just need to shoot a video real quick because <laughs> she was like, Really? Because like, yeah, we it's uh, National Infertility Awareness Week is coming up. And, and so I've worked with advocates, you know, with my congressman here. And so it's getting ready to come up actually this Monday where we're doing again, where we talk to the congressman. We're trying to help people to get IVF if that's what they need. But the biggest story is that so many people are told they need IVF and they don't. Yeah. There's only a few like if you don't have neither one of your tubes, they're blocked or you don't have the uterus or you're in menopause. But other than that, I always get the questions like, well, what if I have this? What have this? Do you have tubes? Do you have a uterus? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there, are your tubes open and cleared? There's more than likely you don't need IVF. And that is the biggest thing because I felt like people are pushed to that so quickly and they don't even really need it. And so mm -hmm. that's why like um, a lot of probably most my most viral videos are the ones that talk about IVF and people get mad. Oh, you don't know I need it. I'm like, okay. It's all right. But listen, <laughs> there's so many people who don't need it. And I want to make sure before somebody goes and puts their life savings into something, try the holistic mm -hmm. approach first and yep. let's see what God does. Yeah, we went to um, a facility clinic because I was like, all right, because when I when I was having my son, my first son, God was like, don't get any testing. Don't do anything. You just gonna have to wait on me. And that's what mm. I did. So I had nothing. I know what was going on. So then the second time 
I was like, all right, God, that was the assignment for the first one. So I still can't get no testing done. Like, what we doing? Because this is too much. And um, God was like, okay, you can get testing. So I just knew I don't, <laughs> I was hoping to find something wrong with me because I was like, well, maybe that will give me an answer. Something wrong with me, something wrong with my husband, so, like give me an answer or whatever. So we went, nothing's wrong with either one of us. And I'm like, okay, this actually, <laughs> I would rather have not known anything at this point because I ain't gone anywhere. So the doctor was like, well, you got two options here. You can keep trying on your home. Or of course, you can get IVF. Finance lady called me the next day. Well, there's going to be $25,000 for this, that, and the other. Um, that's just for one round. If it don't work, then you'll have to pay another 20. I was like, girl, goodbye. <laughs> and no way. So, but I did though consider it in my emotions. I was like, uh, maybe I should try to find my, some financing for this, or maybe I should round up friends and family just wrestling with it because of my emotions. Mm -hmm. And I remember being like, you know what, God, you gonna have to tell me what to do. Cause I believe you can move either way. You can right. move via the IVF route. You can move via the natural route, but which is the path that I am supposed to take? Right. And I was just like, you know what, at this point, God, until you make it clear, I, we just not going to do nothing. And I remember he ended up making it clear that, you know, we were going to go the natural route. And then two weeks later, I found out that I was pregnant. And I was like, God, you came through and you saved us 20, at least 25 grand. <laughs> Listen, I, I have a client who she just had IVF in January. IVF failed. So she mm -hmm. came on with me in February. Uh, January, she had to fail IVF. February, she came on. We started working. And I was just like, you know, I just don't feel like, I feel like Holy Spirit is saying you're not going to need IVF. She's in her mid-40s and she's got children who were younger. I was like, I just don't feel like that's going to be your story. Listen, 45 days after she worked with me, she is pregnant naturally. She was literally getting ready to go for her next round, but she wow. couldn't go because her period wouldn't start. And wow. so I was like, girl, if you don't take a test and you do the right. baby, I was like, okay, you telling me what your temperatures are? Uh, I'm pretty sure you're pregnant. She takes a test, send it to me. And I'm like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. There's so many people who are really just getting ready to shell out that money, but mm -hmm. we don't want to wait. And then the other thing that people don't even realize is IVF is not a guarantee. If mm -hmm. your body is not in the right position when you go to get your IVF, it still can fail. So mm -hmm. just because you uh, go the IVF route, it doesn't mean it's going to necessarily work. I, life still starts with God, period. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just always like to make sure people are aware of that. It's not the final end all be all just because you decide to get IVF. Yeah, it's, it's a blessing that technology has advanced to that level. I'm so fascinated by it because we were right. talking about it. I was like, wait, how does that work? <laughs> I'm like, whoa, this is yeah. this is amazing scientifically. And this, this is wonderful that this is possible. But at right. the same time, especially as believers, I just don't ever want, and that's my always my thing when it comes to anything that God has me doing, is I don't want anything to get the glory that God is supposed to get. So if at any point something else is getting in the way, I, I try to check first. Like, okay, yeah. God, am I in the way? Is this in the way? Is this taken away from you? Like, what what we doing? So I'm I'm just glad that you're doing what you're doing because it's so important to have people who know the Lord in helping you with something like this. Yeah. So tell us about your new book, The Fertility Cheat Code. Yeah, so the fertility cheat code, I'm so excited about it um, because a lot of people I've realized like, okay, I have a course, it's got videos and it's got, you know, handouts and they're like, okay, just tell me what to do. Like, <laughs> give yeah. me this. Give me like, no, I don't want to listen to you talk for 30 minutes. And I'm like, okay, well, some people like you getting all the jewels. They want to hear the conversation. They're taking notes. There's, there's certain type of people. That's who they are. So I really created the book out of a necessity of people saying, just give me the bullet points. Boom, boom, boom. What do I need to do? I don't need to talk to you. I just need you to tell me what to do and I'm going to do it. That's where the book was birthed from. So I have so many people who um, just wanted to know, like, tell me exactly what you did. And so I'm like, okay, it's not like a, a two sentences where I'm going to tell you and people are kind of confused, but like, I'm like, there's so many things that you have to look at. And so the book is just basically step-by-step step, all the areas I believe that you need to address coming from the spiritual um, standpoint. 
And then from the natural, because I believe, you know, God could put his super on your natural, but you need to do something the natural sometimes. Sometimes God's going to do it. You don't have to do nothing. But what if you don't? So let's mm -hmm. get prepared. Start acting like you're expecting your miracle. So I show people how you prepare physically for what God is going to do in your life. And then the other part um, is just giving you information about, you know, testing and things you need to do, like, you know, supplements you need to take, um, tests you need to be asking your doctor for. OK, you have multiple miscarriages your doctor should be running about 13 different tests. And some people are like, what? Like your doctor will just sometimes they'll send you home like, oh, okay, well you can get pregnant. You could just try again. And that mm -hmm. is the most insensitive thing to do to somebody. I just feel like so many people are not aware of what they should be asking their doctors, um, what supplements they can be taking, how, you know, the unforgiveness works. And so there's so many aspects of that that I just basically say, okay, step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do this. Do all these things to put your body in the optimal condition to get pregnant. And that's exactly what the book is, a step-by-step. -step. It's literally a guide to do exactly those things. Nice. So where can people get the book? So it's available on my website at fertilityfreak.com. You can get a digital uh, copy there. And it's also available on Amazon. Um, the digital and the paperback are available there. Nice. And what are some of the services as well? Because I want people, I mean, clearly right. I'm passionate about the property. <laughs> so I want people to get everything that you have to offer. So if somebody wanted to work with you to get pregnant, what's the first step to do that? Um, so you can go to my website as well, fertilityfreak.com. Um, and I always like to put it out there. Unless you have blocked tubes and a hysterectomy or in menopause, Holla at your girl. I can help. If other, outside of those things, I can help you. But you can go to fertilityfreak.com and I have group coaching. I have one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching. But most people come through the group coaching program. There's an application on my website. If you feel like in my situation, I want to make sure you can help me before I sign up. That's totally fine. There's an application on my website right on the homepage. It's really easy to find. Um, or if not, just go ahead, jump in. You can um, get get ready. Uh, we're, what we're going to do is work together for four weeks to go through every area of your life that you need to address and there's so much content and so many things that you need to address there's most people are missing one small piece to the puzzle and so mm -hmm. i'm here to find out your history learn about you let's get on a, a call so we can create a plan for you to get pregnant and using the holistic approach i always let people know it's going to take you anywhere from 60 to 90 days to see a difference in what you're doing in your body holistically so mm -hmm. you have to be prepared to work and do the work for 60 to 90 days if you can give me 90 days i believe you're your body's going to shift. And I believe that you will be in optimal condition to get pregnant. So it's up to you to do the work. And I'm here to lead you through the work that you need to do. Yes. Well, everybody, I'm going to put the links in the show notes to make it easy for you. I'm going to put Michelle's social media and everything there. So y'all can be cackling on her TikTok. <laughs> like I am. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle, for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I, I, I actually saw this happening years ago. Didn't know how it was going to happen, but I saw it. And so I'm like, oh, okay, God, let's go. Let's go. So thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of the Blessed and Bossed Up podcast. And I'll talk to you next week.